Okay, this is part two of using selections as stencils. And when we were wrapping up the last section here, or lecture, <clears throat> excuse me, we had gone to select to reload that selection. And I, I already have mine up, but we were loading the selection because we saved it. And we've got to remember that we are in the right document, but we are not in the right lemon channel, which is just a saved in this case, a save selection. So we're going to come in and grab that selection, the lemon, and click OK. And of course, this selection will pop up. And that's isolating this area. So it's like a stencil you've cut out of plastic and you've placed it down on a sheet of paper and you're maybe you're using an airbrush to spray this in or you're painting it in. But you're building up this wonderful value. And that's fun. And we also have defined a custom brush that's our lemon rind and we're going to paint that lemon rind now in and, and we're going to learn how to build up the values correctly so I've got the uh, paintbrush right here and I'm going to pop up to the brushes and whenever you define a brush it's the last one here now just to show you too if you come to the bottom right corner, you know, this lets you manipulate and move this, this plethora of brushes. So if you're wondering why mine is always out like this, I just, that's the way I like to look at it. I like to see them all. But here it is. It's the, la whoop, the last one at the very bottom. And the size tells you the size of the brush that you made. So I made this about 157 pixels. So if the file is 300 pixels per inch, 150 is half of that. So it's a half inch brush. And that's just important. You usually don't want to like make your brush any larger than about 200%. So probably we'll try to avoid making it anything over 300 or so pixels. I'm going to click out of that, usually in the gray area, because if you're not careful, you could paint somewhere. So I'm going to click in the gray area over there. And here's how I build my values, and everybody does it a little differently. When you're in your brush, remember last section, if you hold down the Alt option, you have the ability to sample that value. And I'm going to start building this up, and I'll build from the base down here in the shadows. <clears throat> and I'm going to Option and click, and that will give me that value in the foreground. Well, I want to probably in the shadow area, I may want to make that value just a little lighter or just a little darker. Um, and that's, that's just kind of how you, you start playing. So I'm going to come into that value that I just sampled, option click, click on it, the foreground box, and this way you can either darken it, I might darken it a little and you can see the change. This is your current uh, value or color in this we're working in values but this is your current value and this is your new value so we'll go ahead and click OK and now we just have it a little darker than what we sampled and you can pop in some of those values now I'm going to zoom in it's a little bit hard to see I'll switch to the zoom tool for a moment just so you can see this a little closer come back in and we're going to just pop in some of these beautiful values this little textured rind and again as you get better at this you can have a lot of fun because you're just varying your textures now as we build up then I might and I like to make this random by the way don't do a line because then you'll see this sort of linear pattern happening but just pop in some some random values and I'm gonna stop there on the right side because this is getting lighter and again you could come over here and option click there's my new value and pop in there and I'm just gonna make that maybe a tiny bit lighter you can see the difference right here and get those values in what's really nice too is that you can start to blend and overlap the areas that seem to not be working and build your texture up it's just really fun truth is it's just a blast to do and you can see I'm not attached if I don't like it you can always undo you can always step backward 
until you're starting to like it. And I option click a lot. So I'm coming in here, option click, and raise this a little bit. Subtle differences. And continue to do this to, you know, I think this is the way you can blend well. Now I'm getting kind of linear here. So a lot of that's talking and working. I want to be in the present moment with what's happening. So we come in and getting that in there. Mostly having a really good time doing it. And I'm overlapping because, again, I don't want this linear look. And i got a little bit going on, which I'll fix as we keep going. Now, as we come up to the lighter portions, then we will build in the lighter values. So, excuse me, we'll option click. And move this up. Anyway, you keep overlapping and see how if you cross over light and dark, you can overlap. And that's what I'm going to do to kind of avoid the lines if I find that I'm, and I do, I have lines. So I'm going to come back in and paint over those with just the right value to begin this blending. Now, the other thing, too, is be aware of opacity because opacity works the same way. Like, if you get a value, certainly feel free to turn off the opacity. Okay, so we're continuing here, and we're popping in these values. And you can always come back here. Like, I might come down where I'm seeing this line and option click and just click again on the foreground and just pop it down a little bit. and continue some blending. Option click. I'm just going to make that a little darker. Sometimes it takes a little bit just to figure out what value you want to get that kind of blending you want. There we go. And that way you can. The more you do of this, the more blending you'll get between these areas. Now, in your project, this is optional. If you want to create a texture for your stencil, that's, that's great. But a lot of stencil artists don't use a, a texture. They might do like a koi fish, which would be really cool. But they don't want a texture inside it. Uh, you could also select a fin for the, for the fish, let's say, and change that way. That could be really fun. Option click. Just a tiny bit darker. you can overlap what's happening here get that rind in there this idea and anyway the more you do it the the more you'll have this really beautiful blended texture and the values you've already put in there these lights and darks help you see you the values that you need to attain so that's that's why you're starting with that marking point and this is why we're doing it in values, in these lights and darks, because it really teaches you how lights and darks play such a huge role in dimension. So it's really pretty fun. Whoops, a little too dark. Now I'm going to lighten that up a little bit. Kind of get that going just takes a while. Now, I may not finish this part because we're wrapping it up, but this is generally the rule. And, you know, the more you play in this way, the better it gets. Lighten that. And you can just keep blending until you are happy with the look. Happy with that. So I have a bit of a line, so I'm going to 
do a little more, but I do want to move on to the other parts of what you want to pull off. But you can see here I'm starting to get a really nice blend. And again, the more that you do this, the blending will happen. You can see it's starting to occur. You can go through the whole thing again and get just the best blends in your, your study. So I want to carry on though because we do have more to cover and this would take quite a while. So I'm going to carry on with this and, and here's our lemon. So now what if we want to turn this into color? What we can do if we want this in color at this point is change our image mode. And the image mode is the first word under the image menu. These are all your major uh, modes, either in uh, black and white, grayscale, in a, a variety of colors. Bitmap, in this case, in a color mode, means 100% black and 100% white. Uh, like back in the day, uh, I don't know, in the 80s or late 70s when they they got these computers out they were working in 100% uh, black and 100% white and then eventually we've got our 256 shades of gray we're going to move this to CMYK color because CMYK is for print and RGB is for anything that stays on the monitor color light like web or animation or video so I'm going to switch to CMYK just click OK through these color profiles so right now uh, we're not going to worry too much about that. And now we're in color. Obviously, it's not going to turn to color because we did it all in grayscale. But here's how you can, at least one way, that you can make this have a color to it. And that's, again, in image adjustments under hue saturation. And let me move some of this over, move the toolbox over. The colorize is what's going to give that to you because colorize is grayscale plus one color. Click on that and then I'm just going to move my hue slider to the lemon color. Certainly saturate adding the purity of color to this. Ooh, there's a lime. And manipulate this until you like the tone. I'm just going to make it kind of a little more saturated there. Something around that. Move the hue slider to you really like the look. You can see I could do a little bit more up here in terms of values, but you can see how that's being translated from grayscale to color. So we're just adding the color to it. Certainly you could do darkness, you could work darkness, see what that looks like. That, you might like that. A brightness. And the main thing is just to have a lot of fun doing it. I'm going to go with that, click OK. And now that we still have the lemon selected, if you want to make another lemon, we would do that in this way. Um, certainly a lot of people will copy and paste the selected area. And I'm going to tell you, I caution you in that way. Um, it used to be the way that we would work, and we would soften the edge and so on. But the new way, and the better way, in my opinion, is select and refine the edge of your selection, your edge of your lemon, under Refine Edge, under the Select menu. And you can view the lemon in a lot of different ways. You can see it against black. You can really see what the edges look like. Um, you can view it with this red overlay, which we can, we'll talk about later. The marching ants, also on white. Um, and you can just look at these. Look at these as different ways. They're just tools so that you can see just the edge right here. And we'll come back to this window uh, later. Lastly, we're going to output this to a new layer. Output, in this case, to a new layer and click OK. That over here in your layer panel just made another lemon. It can't, you can't see it because it's right on top of the other lemon and the background where you initially made this, which you need to do it on the background the white background. Um, I'm just going to turn on both of those so we can see here's the new layer. There's the one behind it where we can see sort of like the white background. Now in this background, let me move this up, if we click on the right top tool, that move tool, and move this layer, 
we can then see the lemon. And then if you want, you can